Hello students, Miss Swanson here, and today we're going to learn about thermal energy transfer. Now this picture here you're actually going to see a little bit later, and it's showing us all of the different ways that we can transfer thermal energy, conduction, convection, and radiation. So let's take a look at what those things mean. First of all, what are our learning goals? You should be able to list and describe the three methods of energy transfer and provide examples of each of these methods of energy transfer. So just some terminology, heat is a form of energy called thermal energy, and we measure the amount of thermal energy or the amount of heat using temperature. So, so units like degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit or Kelvin, those are all measuring the temperature, which is how we measure the amount of heat or the amount of thermal energy that exists. So the, here are three different ways of transferring thermal energy. The first is conduction. Conduction occurs in solid substances, and it occurs through the direct contact of substances. Then the next one is convection, and this is in fluids. So that counts as liquids and gases. Those are both considered fluids. And this happens without any direct contact, but through the movement of particles. And then the third method is radiation, and this occurs through the movement of waves. So a lot of time when we think about sun, we think about the, the sunlight waves, that's the radiation. So that's one of the classic forms of radiation uh, heat transfer. So, excuse me, uh, here's a picture that shows all three of these types of heat transfer. Conduction, you can see that the person is holding the pot and their hand is solid and they're touching the metal pot, which is also solid. So two solids in direct contact. And if there isn't a proper handle on that pot, the person's hand's gonna get burnt, it's gonna get awfully hot as that heat transfers up into their hand. Convection, you can see this is happening in, I don't know if that's water, or whatever happens to be in the pot, and there's a movement of the water molecule, so the fluid is moving, and that's the transfer of heat inside of that pot. And then radiation is coming from the, the flame there, so you have waves of heat that are coming off of that flame, and so that's the radiation. Let's take a look at another example. So this was from the very first picture there. Conduction, we have a pot that's on a stove and the pot itself is metal. It's touching the coils of the stove. That's metal, so it's having direct contact and they're both solids. Then we have convection. In this case, it's the air that has the convection. So last time we saw convection in water, here it is in air. So heat from that furnace is going up and it's moving the air particles around. Those air particles are moving and the hot air is rising up towards the little kitty cat and keeping it warm. And then we have radiation, so direct waves coming out from the furnace towards the gentleman who's sitting there reading his newspaper. So we have all three forms of, of uh, heat transfer. And how does this imp uh, actually affect our climate system that we're worried about? Well, the climate system transports thermal energy from places that are hot to places that are cold. And it makes those hot places a little bit cooler than they would normally be, and the cold places a little bit warmer than they would normally be. And so they're transferring this heat through those different uh, methods. So with radiation, we're usually thinking about the sunlight coming towards the Earth. So that's our initial form of energy. With convection, we have convection currents in the water and in the air. And then with our um, conduction, this one's a little bit different, but it has to do with different substances on Earth and how well they absorb and how well they can um, conduct heat throughout themselves. So all three of these processes are happening on Earth and they affect the climate on Earth. So let's take another look at our learning goals. You should be able to list and describe the three methods of energy transfer, provide examples of each of the methods of energy transfer. If you can do all these things, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video, and if you're still having questions, come ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.